Welcome everybody and thank you for joining on time today. So today's session will be actually by uh, Jasnit, uh, who is our uh, happiness director and as well as Mia who is our studio manager um, all the way from Australia. So uh, we do have some external guests um, who is uh, from Rohe. Uh, they have actually requested to join us. They are actually um, people who have interviewed us uh, regarding on our culture. So they would like to observe how we are doing uh, running certain events. So we have uh, invited them today and they are on the line as well. Uh, okay, I think that's uh, all for me. I think I will pass the mic to Jasmine. Uh, Mia, maybe you want to share the full screen? Yep. Thank you, uh, Emily. Am I, am I audible? Yep, yep. Okay, thanks Emily. Uh, hello everyone, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome uh, to your personal brand experience uh, session. Mia and I will be talking about personal branding uh, for the next uh, 25 minutes and we will close the session uh, with Q&A if any. Uh, before uh, we start, may I request you to spend uh, two minutes and fill out uh, the Google form link uh, which Mia has shared uh, in, in the chat. Uh, Mia, could you please help uh, share the Google form link in the chat? And everyone, can you please uh, link, click on the link and help us fill out uh, the Google form? Thank you. Sorry, give me two seconds. Yeah, do you want me to do it? Sorry, yes, my computer's just gotten really slow because I'm running the two. Okay. Uh, 
Sorry, guys, just give us a second. All right. Uh, I think while Mia figures out uh, the the form uh, link, um, I will uh, continue um, uh, with the with the session first, and probably we'll uh, share out uh, this Google form link uh, at the end of the session. So Mia, can you come back to the presentation and uh, give us the Google form at the end of the session? Sure. All right. Um, moving forward. Um, so, what is your uh, personal brand, Mia? Can you share your slides, please? I'm struggling. Sorry, my computer's just struggling to load both things at the same time. Okay, Emily, can I request you to present the slides? Sure. Just give me a moment. All right, I have the, the Google uh, link presented while Emily takes uh, time uh, to uh, present. Can I request all of you, sorry for this, uh, uh, this uh, mess up uh, at the start of the presentation. There's some uh, yeah, hang up okay. with the- uh, yeah. already. Yeah, so the, the Google form uh, uh, link is also um, pasted on the chat. If you guys can take uh, two minutes and help us uh, fill out the form and uh, just say uh, yes uh, and uh, uh, once you are done filling out the form. Is everyone able to open the form and fill out? Mm. Emily, are you able to view the form? All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, if everybody is uh, okay, um, you know, you can keep filling the form while we present. Uh, I will uh, move on with the presentation. Emily, you okay to present the slides? Yeah, yeah. All right. So talking about uh, what is a personal brand, in layman terms, personal brand is all about you. It's time to know how you can work on the brand you. The question you would ask yourself I am a person, do I need a brand? The answer is, you already have a brand. The question is, 
how you want to manage your brand or not. Next slide, please. Um, so Jeff Bezos, you know, the CEO and founder of Amazon.com has very wisely quoted branding. Branding is what people say about you when you are not in the room. So what is your brand? In short, it is your reputation. Each interaction you have with others has the opportunity to create a memorable experience, teaching them what they can expect from you. When you are consistent in delivering those experiences, you build a strong reputation. Delivering your brand clearly and consistently across a wide audience helps you to open doors to opportunities. Your brand becomes your calling card, a unique promise of a value, a distinct and authentic representation of you. In building your personal brand, you define your individuality, you maximize your strength and manage your choices now to create future opportunities. Emily, can you move on to the next slide, please? Next one. So what do you get in return when you develop your brand as a person? You create the brand you. Your branding enhances your value, your credibility, your recognition, and your reputation. I'll pass on the, the slides to Mia. Uh, she's going to further elaborate on what is personal branding and how you can apply it into your professional life. Over to you, Mia. Thanks, Jesse. Um, sorry. Um... Um, yeah, before we go on, uh, I'll do the screen sharing instead, uh, Emily. Yeah. Sorry about that. So everyone can see my screen? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, over to okay. you, Mia. Thanks, guys. Uh, so next slide, please. So as folks who work in the technology design space, we're all impressed by visuals and we all have a really good understanding of how those visuals work in day-to-day -day life from ordering your morning coffee, getting on the train um, to, the, to the cookware that you select to cook your dinner. It's very evident in everything that we do. So how do we interpret and relate this to a whole human? Next slide, please. So what is a personal brand? Um, what do you guys think? Um, from the answers here, something that an influencer or celebrity says, um, your side hustle, the identity that you wish people to perceive you as, or your favorite fashion brand. I think uh, for most people, we um, <laughs> it will probably be A, something that they've mostly heard celebrities uh, discuss. Uh, however, it is actually answer C. Your brand is how you like to present yourself in order to create a perception around yourself with other people. Now, this can be something personal. This can be something that you use on your social media. Um, I know that for myself, I have a very specific use for each platform. Each platform on its visual level will appear, will show a very different side of my personality. Um, next slide, please. William? So Wikipedia describes personal branding as the conscious and conscious and intentional effort to create and influence public perception. This can be done by positioning them as an authority in their industry, elevating their credibility and differentiating themselves from the competition to ultimately advance their career, increase their circle of influence and have a larger impact. Next slide, please. The concept of personal branding from Wikipedia is actually based around the self-presentation theory by Irving Goffman. Uh, this was a social study released in the 1950s using the imagery of theater in order to portray the nuances and significances of face-to-face -face social interaction. He referred to this as dramaturgical mo the dramaturgical model of social life. Next slide, please. So why use this at work? How often have you found yourself agreeing with the saying, first impressions are lasting impressions? 
generally on personal and even internal colleagues, with internal colleagues, it becomes a bit of a source of humor. Oh, I thought this when I first met you. I thought you were like this when I first met you. But as you get to know someone, you get to know their personality and your first impressions may not always be correct. However, externally, you may only get the chance to present this brand or your persona once. And so you need to be able to make a really great impression. Next, uh, next slide, please. And this is important because you bring your professional personality to work every single day. It's like all those jokes that you see fly around on the internet about retail staff having customer service voices as opposed to their real voices. Um, you can be more relaxed at work. You can uh, get to know your colleagues who then understand your brand, your personality, and you can become that, you know, a little bit more, more relaxed. But there is still the expectation to behave professionally and set professional expectations. Having set expectations within yourself on how you are likely to engage with people on a professional le level gives you the ability to navigate surprising comments or conversations with ease. It also allows your colleagues and managers to be able to rely on your skills and expertise. And it's a great way to focus on your strengths and work out and work on any of your weaknesses as well. Next slide, please. So how do you turn this personality digitally, especially uh, during the current time of COVID where we're all working from home? Not all of your first impressions will be face to face. So how do you inject your brand into an email or a phone call where you need to remain professional, friendly and open? A good suggestion for me is to add the Grammarly browser extension. That will often tell you what your tone looks like uh, with little emojis as well. So it's very, very, very visual and it's very easy to understand. Next slide, please. Another way is to make sure that another trick, especially on the phone is to uh, smile when you answer the phone. That smile will actually come through on that call and you will sound a lot happier even if, uh, even if the call isn't exactly what you need right now. Next slide, please, William. So, looking back on the last couple of slides and why this is important to bring to work every day, where for external clients, internal people, uh, folks, as well as, you know, suppliers and guests to the office. Uh, so, we want to make an impression without being seen. So, we would make sure that our emails are clear, that we're using... Uh, correct spelling, correct grammar, correct syntax. Uh, we would like to, remain, to make sure that we remain friendly, but without sounding too familiar. Um, so that, that sort of use of the Grammarly extension is really a, is a really great tool to make that impression without being seen. Um, and it, a brand also gives you the ability to control and create conversation. Using the dramaturgical interpretation, it gives you the ability to put forth a character and you know how that character will respond, even in stressful situations or in situations that you may not be expecting. Maintaining clear contact is also something else that's incredibly important. Uh, being, having, having that reliability on your staff, on, on your colleagues, on your managers um, is, is, it's, absolutely priceless, realistically. Um, and paying attention to your brand voice. So as we know, when we read through Instagram posts that Aleph has made, we have a certain tone to our brand. This is how Aleph sounds. This is the expectation on EDMs, on any sort of communication that isn't verbal. Your own personal brand will have that tone of voice as well. How do you want people to hear you? For me, on a personal level, being the studio manager and dealing with a number of different people, both internally and externally, it's very, very important that I am sound friendly and open to everyone. So that if anyone feels like they need to ask a question, regardless of whether it is a small question, a large question, it doesn't matter. My motto is, you know, there's no such thing as a, as a silly question. I need to betray that. I need to be open to that. Next slide, please. So this is a, an example of what you will see in Grammarly when you're writing out an email. Uh, and this particular email that I, I, grabbed, I got this screen grab from was to an external supplier. So as you can see, this email is written that I sound first and foremost formal, which was very important in this email with that, that external supplier. 
We also make sure we want to maintain a slightly more positive than neutral, but also not sounding too over the top happy. Uh, as well as being semi-confident in what you're saying, you want to come across as being confident in your abilities and your knowledge. Next slide, please. So what about your appearance? Fashion is really hard. There's 30 million different types of fashion um, and for everyone, it's going to be very different. 15 years ago, no one would ever think about wearing ripped jeans to work. But now on a casual Friday, especially within the tech industries and the, cre and the creative industries, um, it's certainly something that has become a lot more acceptable. Having said that, if your client is a legal firm, it would not be acceptable to wear denim to that office. So please ensure that your dress codes remain relevant to the industry and the client at hand. But now, rather than expecting full corporate or uniforms, most companies do have a business casual dress code. But that's quite an open interpretation. Industries like, you know, as I said before, legal, definitely would be still very corporate, but most other companies have, you know, reduced that down. Uh, next slide, please, William. So this is your, your stock standard version of business corporate. This is what was worn every day back in the 90s if you were, if you were corporate, end of story. There was no ifs, buts or maybes. And this was also applicable to all genders as well. Next slide, please. In the 2000s-ish, it started to drop down to this more business casual where you were expected to still wear chinos and a shirt or a v-neck or a crew neck, but it was slightly more comfortable than wearing that full-blown power suit every day. Next slide, please, William. So, I'd like to get your opinion on these two outfits here. Would you say that these are work acceptable outfits? You can reply in the chat, yes or no. Mia's question was that are these outside, are these uh, outfits work acceptable or not? The, the two uh, pictures that you see on the slide. Um, I think we have a mixed review. Majority of people started saying yes first. So, uh, it is a bit of a, it came probably yes for the guys. It has become a bit of a quick question, and I, um, for those who have said yes for the male presenting person, absolutely right. A casual long sleeve shirt is absolutely fine for ninety nine percent of officers. However, the fem female presenting person, uh, due to the what appears to be backless and exposed shoulders, I would suggest not wearing that to the office on an everyday level, unless you work, are lucky enough to work for a fashion magazine or you know something like that. However, I would find that acceptable for a Christmas party. Next slide, please. So similarly to the other outfits, would you say that any of these are acceptable to wear, wear to work every day? Or on casual Fridays? <laughs> Leticia said you must be joking. <laughs> no, 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 two. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so one and two, number one is obviously completely and utterly unacceptable for work. I mean, we're looking at torn denim, which is not a very professional look. Uh, the length is um, fairly unacceptable for a day-to-day -day office. Uh, the t-shirt itself, you know, with a nice pair of jeans and perhaps a blazer, I can't imagine anything being wrong with that. However, again, with the large logo, I would definitely leave that for casual Fridays. Um, yeah, large logos like that are generally not ideal unless it's your own company logo. <laughs> Now the middle shirt, the middle image, uh, generally again, I would say that the t-shirt is not an issue. However, those shorts appear to be tracksuit shorts. If you are looking to wear shorts to work, and uh, it doesn't happen in Australia very often, but on 35 plus degree days, occasionally um, many officers will give exemption to wear shorts to ensure that nobody is in danger from overheating. 
Uh, if that is the situation, I would suggest looking for a lovely pair of linen shorts or chino shorts. They tend to hold a slightly better form and structure, thus giving you a, li a little bit more professional appearance. Now, the person on the right uh, is probably nailing the everyday casual business uh, look. They have a t-shirt on but with the slight collar. It gives a little bit more for professionalism. It also is a, a lovely muted colour as well as having a minimal pattern. And the jeans, as you can see, are intact and unfrayed. Next slide, please. All right. Um, uh, talking about how do you communicate uh, your brand? How do you present yourself? Uh, let's talk about uh, handshake. Uh, as Mia said, you know, the first impression lasts. Uh, don't let something as small as professional attire or body language block all your roads before even you have said a word. Let's talk about handshake. Please use your right hand. Give a firm handshake for three seconds, but not a bone crushing squeeze. Don't, don't break the other person's hand. And remember, it has to be for three seconds. Uh, no dead fish handshake as well. I hope you all know what is dead fish handshake. It's, it's something like this. Maintain a good posture and eye contact and smile when you are introducing yourself. Make sure your first impression is memorable and authentic. How about greeting? Stand up when you are greeting or meeting new people. Make an eye contact. Smile and the world smiles back at you. Get the name right, you know. Uh, if you don't understand the name, just make sure that, you know, you ask a second time and pronounce people's name correctly. Talking about body language at work. Focus on your posture at work. No drooping shoulders. Sit with your back erect, you know. Uh, don't get too comfortable on the chair. Uh, very important point is um, control your hand gesture when you're talking to other people. No folded hands. No cross hands. Uh, when you listen to somebody and you're sitting with a folded hand, it means that you're not interested, you are bored or you are unapproachable. Talking about your values. Your values are like your personal compass. They provide the direction for your choices and your behavior. Uh, when you are living in, in an alignment with your values and integrating your passion in what you do, you are excited you are engaged and you are totally unstoppable. Know your values well, speak to people and explain them your values with a spark in your heart and your eyes. Uh, how about networking? You know, if, if you want to create the brand you, uh, build your network, you know, register yourself for conferences, workshop, approach to people who you don't know in these conferences, engage. Especially, go and talk to people who are all by themselves. Be the one who initiates, you know. Don't be a wallflower and wait for people to come to you. A powerful introduction is an important tool in your arsenal when you're meeting and introducing people. How about value of time? You know, uh, keep a watch on time. Don't let people wait for you. Be on time for calls and meetings. Manage your calendar. This is something I am learning personally and improving every day uh, just to make sure that I check my calendar on time and uh, I'm there for the calls or meetings uh, whenever needed. Uh, we all can't be perfect, but you can think about it and improve. Shout out if your calendar is double booked, okay? Stop making other people's life difficult, you know, haunting you to be on time for the meetings or calls. Be available for your colleagues and your clients during the working hours. How about your smile? Uh, this is my favorite part. Uh, uh, most of you know that uh, I love smiling and smiling is important, but it is equally important to know when not to smile and be genuine with your smile when you are interacting with others. So personal branding is all about standing out while being yourself, your best self. You need to step up and stand out if you want to create your brand. It's all about being aware of what's happening around you. Uh, next slide, please. Talking about emails, you know, how, how do you communicate uh, via email? Some of the uh, basic tips, you know, for, for email. Don't be sloppy in an attempt uh, to be friendly. 
watch your grammar, spellings, punctuation, fonts. There are tools available. Please make use of them. Avoid talking aimlessly in your emails. Stick to the point. Don't write lengthy emails. People don't really enjoy it. Choose your subject wisely. As Mia said, first impression last. Your email subject is the first impression of your email. Now, don't keep repeating re, 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 and you know, have uh, an email with 40, 60, 50, 60 exchanges uh, where the content and subject of the email has completely changed. Take the initiative to start a new email. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please, William. Okay, there's a lag, I'll continue. Uh, some of the uh, tips to up your game uh, with your email. Reply to emails uh, promptly, okay? Emojis are good, uh, but know when to control and where the emojis are not applicable while you are writing an email. Send smaller compressed files, uh, people will appreciate it. Watch your tone throughout the email. The greeting at the start and the end really, really matters. Uh, the last one uh, is my favorite. Uh, I, I see a lot of people doing this. Avoid sending an email for discussion, which are better done face to face. You know, if, if you have a colleague sitting next to you or even the colleague is somewhere in the office or sitting two chairs away, don't send an email for a conversation. Don't ping on Hangouts for a conversation. Walk up from your chair go and speak to that person. Of course, I, I do understand at this point of time when all of us are working from home, uh, it, it's not possible, uh, but please, please remember this uh, for future. Moving on uh, to the next slide, please. Talking about uh, your online presence, okay? Now, this is how people perceive you. Um, my view is uh, be there all or none. I mean, it's your choice to be on social media, whether you want to be on social media or you don't want to be, it's your personal choice. But if you are there, be your best. Okay. There are various platforms these days, you know, where people are there on social media, talking about Twitter, talking about Facebook, LinkedIn, you know, website, your portfolios, your blog. Um, I'll be talking about LinkedIn because uh, it's connected to your profession. If you are there, just make sure you have a very honest profile on LinkedIn. Don't have hidden profiles and you know, troll other people on online. Don't fake things online. Be genuine. When people will meet you in person, they will know all the truth about you. Don't hide behind the camera. Okay? Um, when, when possible, you know, uh, try uh, to turn on your camera when you are on video calls. This is for your profession. You know, nobody is shooting you or nobody is trying to uh, be funny with you. So try and turn on your camera. And if your presence is there online, make sure that you are at your best. Next slide, please. Um, we are just quickly going to show you some of the examples of uh, LinkedIn. Uh, which should, th this is how your profile should not look like on LinkedIn. Uh, a profile with no profile picture, nobody knows who you are. Um, um, you have an avatar, uh, but it's a fake avatar. You know, you post a picture of somebody else. Uh, some people have pets. We all know that you love your pets, uh, but uh, on, on LinkedIn, uh, professionally, people would like to see you. Our clients do Google us, you know, when we, when we send your profiles to them during our pitches. So just make sure that, you know, your LinkedIn profile, if you have one, is updated. Uh, uh, don't smile too much for your profile's picture also because it does not look uh, uh, professional. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Now, these are the images uh, which look very professional on LinkedIn. People are smiling. People have given their right description, who they are, what they do. Uh, this is how your uh, LinkedIn profile uh, should look like if you have one. Moving on to the next one, please. So uh, while thinking about uh, personal branding, uh, take a good look, you know, maintain your brand. Uh, you will have to keep working on it time and again. Be flexible. We are all humans. You know, we, we change over the time. Uh, we need to reinvent ourselves. You know, if you have time, Google yourself, uh, check your online presence. Okay? 
ask others for feedback. You know, uh, anybody whom you trust, it can be your colleagues, it can be your peers, it can be your mentors. Ask them for a feedback, how you can grow uh, and maintain your brand at the same time. Check with them, you know, uh, uh, where do you stand right now and where do you want to go from here? Have an avatar, but a real one. Don't fake your avatar, uh, you know, online or in the real life as well. Take a, take a look deeper. Uh, next slide, please, William. Take a look deeper if you are thinking and uh, talking about your uh, brand. Know your attributes. When you are talking to others, try and tell a story. Have your own mantra. Be a magnet and be an authentic one. Be alive and be aware of your surroundings. Next one, please, William. So um, just to summarize, uh, our, I, I know we are over, uh, running a bit over time, but just to summarize um, our uh, take on uh, personal branding, um, you know, you need to work on the brand you. Personal branding is uh, not a one-time event, but it is a continuous process. It is a state of mind and make it a priority in your life. Personal branding creates awareness, it builds trust, it creates a reputation for you and it also influences perception. But the most important part of your brand is that it is unapologetically you. Never compromise on your own comfort. Uh, with this thought, uh, uh, we leave you with the thinking of personal branding. If you have any questions, uh, we are open to questions. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time and listening to me and myself. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jasni and Mia. So uh, I have collected some uh, comments and questions uh, during uh, your presentation. So um, I think when you, you guys are presenting about the t-shirt, I think the dressing, Janaka mentioned that mm -hmm. the moral of the story is that we need an LF, LF logo t-shirt. What is your take on that, Jasni? I believe, um, I believe actually has a, um, a template for that. Um, we were looking at getting some design for user research in Melbourne so that our team could wear a left branded t-shirts when we were out taking user surveys. Unfortunately, COVID hit before that <laughs> sort of really. And so that's sort of been put on the back burner. But I, yeah, I believe that we do have a template here in Melbourne. Cool. Thanks for sharing, Mia. So the next one is from Leticia. Uh, I think she has already um, dropped off our meeting, but uh, I think we can still answer that for her and then she can watch the recording. So uh, what about handshakes these days, given the COVID situation? Like uh, a lot of people actually have commented that it's a big no-no. So what are your take on this? I think you can uh, uh, touch the elbow and uh, this is going to end soon, you know. Uh, uh, personally, I believe COVID is not going to last for whole of our lives and uh, the handshake is going to come back uh, very soon. Uh, so I think we should uh, prepare for that and uh, think about the future. Uh, COVID is something uh, nobody has any control over it, uh, but we definitely need to think about the future. And uh, when we start uh, handshaking again, uh, yeah, we, we practice a firm handshake, three seconds and no bone crushing squeeze. That's what we need to remember. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Justin. Um, okay. The next one is actually from me. So what, uh, you guys have shared a few things to take note when it comes to our personal brand. So uh, just want to know what do you think is the most impre uh, important thing when it comes to first impression? I think uh, it's your vibe. Uh, you know, there is, uh, there is a saying, you know, your vibe enters the room even before you do. Uh, so, uh, uh, and, and why it means it's, it's your body language, it's, it's, you know, the way you walk, uh, the way you dress up, uh, and uh, uh, your vibe, I think that that is most, most, most important. Uh, whenever you enter any meeting, you know, whenever you en enter any discussion, uh, what kind of vibe are you entering uh, the, the meeting with? Uh, that makes all the difference. Okay, uh, and this one is from Sheena, I think more more to suggest it because this is regarding our studio. When you are sharing about posture, um, mm -hmm. Sheena asked you, uh, but we have such a comfy sofa in the studio. How should we handle that? 
<laughs> so, so Sheena, that's a strict no. But now you are in different phase of uh, life, so there will be an exception for you. Uh, once <laughs> we go back to uh, the studio, you you can uh, definitely lie down on the sofa. We'll make that exception for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so another one from Janaka. Emoji, yeah or nay? Um, Eric said that it depends on the audience. What do you ladies think? Yeah, do you want to answer this? Sure. So for me, uh, emojis aren't generally not an issue to use, but you need to be careful about how and when you, you use them. Mm -hmm. So if this is the first time you're emailing someone external, absolutely not. It's, you want to come across as friendly, yes, but absolutely professional first and foremost. Um, once you've gotten to know them, I find using emojis when you're asking about them personally is not an issue. When I have uh, built a rapport with external suppliers and clients, um, one of the first things I ask them over, you know, in the email is, how was your weekend? What did you get up to? And that's where the emojis will come into play. I would not use them though in the section, you know, when you drop down to the next paragraph to business, I would not use them there. So having the two separate conversations in one email with externals uh, is not an issue. But you really want to differentiate within that email the happy, friendly, hey, how's it going kind of persona and the, great, we've had our catch up, let's get down to business. Yeah, okay, thank you Mia for sharing. Um, okay, I think the next question is from Aleph Less. There's a lot of Aleph Less accounts, so I'm not really sure who asked this question. Okay. Uh, who has the strongest personal brand at Aleph? I think for me, uh, personally, uh, uh, I feel uh, Eric has uh, uh, a very, <laughs> he, is, he is quite inspiring in, in terms of his uh, personal brand and uh, we should uh, uh, look up to him. Yeah. Okay, but Eric has actually said that William has a strong <laughs> personal brand. <laughs> I, I said that's my view. Maybe Mia, you have someone okay. else. What about you, Mia? Definitely Sean. We know from the first instance that Sean walks in, from the first instance of meeting Sean, my own experience, I knew who he was. I knew his working style. I knew his personality without, within 45 minutes of, having, of chatting to him. Okay. Um, Fiona actually suggested Swasti as well because she's funny and she's always quick at her work and always ready to help. And as well, um, I think Santil suggested Ian. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, everybody has their uh, favorite personal yeah. brand. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's all from the chat. Anybody else have any last questions before they share the results from the survey we did earlier? I will give everybody one minute to type. <laughs> May oh. can you share the result? Sure thing. Yep. yep. I think I need um, William oh. to stay sharing. <laughs> yeah, let me stop sharing. Okay, um, I know that we are a bit overrun, so for people uh, who need to drop off, we will actually um, share the recording out to you as well. So just uh, give us some time to uh, document it. So if you want to drop off, you can drop off. Um, but for those who can stay, they will be sharing more about the results that we collected early on. Yeah. Oh, what do you what mean? Do you, ladies, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Fantastic. So these are the responses to the quiz we asked you to fill out earlier. Um, I can see that looking at the results, majority of people are fairly comfortable with who they are, which is fantastic. Um, it's when you're looking at that four out of five, what's really great about that is to go back and reflect that one point. Where is that one point that you're not sure of? What is it that you think that you could work on or bring forward to make yourself more you when you're when you're coming in when you're coming into various situations? So being comfortable with easily and open, openly expressing your ideas, opinion in a group can be really difficult, um, especially learning how to critique or critique someone else's opinion. <laughs> uh, it can be a little bit difficult and you want to make sure that you're not, you know, putting that person down or 
you know, things like that. And I think the best way to go about that is to point out the benefits of the other person's comment, uh, where they're right or where you feel that they're, they're correct. Um, and then saying, but instead of, or piggybacking on that so that you're working in collaboration with the other person to solve a problem, not working against each other, if that makes sense. It's not a competition. <laughs> you're meant to be collaborating. So utilizing that first person's statement and then creating something of your own, even if it's in conflict with what that person said, that's fine. It's, you know, you're taking other people's opinions into consideration, taking things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of into consideration. So I see we have a few folks not that confident with their dress code. <laughs> I hope that uh, how we, the, the few things that we touched on today in regards to dress code have given you a little bit more confidence in knowing how to select your clothing for, for work. Uh, I personally go the um, Steve Jobs route and I have five of the same t-shirts and like five pairs of black jeans. And <laughs> that's about it for me. I stick to the Steve Jobs methods of the same outfit every single day. Public speaking is always something where I find people lack confidence and you need to walk that fine line between being prepared and not sounding like a complete robot. When you hear people just sitting there reading off their cards, it becomes, it becomes boring. They're not engaging. They're not, you know, it's okay if they, you're better off to make a mistake and laugh at yourself and inject your humour and your personality into that then you are being absolutely flawless reading from cards and having zero engagement and zero personality. The only, the other advice I'll give on public speaking, not many people like it, so it's okay. Everyone will be sympathizing with you going, thank God that's not me. <laughs> so I see that also most people are generally fairly comfortable with starting conversations with people that you don't know well. And in a work setting, it's generally much, much easier than in a social setting. Socially, I am really quite introverted and almost unapproachable if I'm sitting at the bar. However, at work, you have a script. You know what you need to talk about. You guys are experts in your field. Use it. That gives you your, your script, per se. Ah, good old apologising. Nobody likes to do it. <laughs> Pride is hard. And I guess apologising isn't, not, it's not just admitting that you were wrong. It's also taking that person, the other person's feelings into consideration. It's the ability to recognise new information and change your opinion based on that, which is very important, especially in our industry. Being wrong gives you the opportunity to learn. And being humble is great personality building. <laughs> and this goes with accepting responsibility as well. Um, everyone's human. We all make mistakes. We've all got 50 billion things going on in our lives. And sometimes you try your best. And as long as you know that you've tried your best, that's great on an internal level. Externally, when you're dealing with potentially people whose error, who's, who has been affected by your error, just take it on. Yep, I made that mistake because when you backtrack, when you make excuses, you know, it doesn't, that's not going to help. That's not going to fix what happened. Taking that example, realizing what you've done wrong, going, hey, I'm really sorry. Let's let me get that fixed. That's enough. So meeting deadlines, due dates, classes, dinners, meetings. Um, my partner actually is the, um, he's always late. Every, like, we call it, we call it cane time. And one of my other closest friends, we have grace time because they're not very much on time people. The biggest thing when it comes to appointments, deadlines, due dates, anything like that, is communication. If you're going to run late, that's okay. Make sure you let people know with as much notice as possible. That is your absolute, that's, that's the biggest thing. It's not, whether you run late or not, these things happen. But when people don't hear from you and they're waiting for you, that's where the frustration comes up, comes from. So you're running two minutes late, great, let people know. Most people will go, no worries, I can find something else to do for that five, 10 minutes. Tracking calendars. 
that's, you know, that's something that I actually struggled with personally um, for a very, very long time. So one of the tricks that I use is to you beat my calendar. It gets beaten. Everything goes in there, whether it be I need to pick up milk through to all of my work commitments and everything like that. Every morning I sit down and I look at my calendar and I work out what needs to be done that day and what needs, could be rearranged, what can't be rearranged, what's come up unexpectedly, all of that. And it's something that I refer back to every single hour or so during the day. I rely on, if I don't have my, my, my phone with me, <clears throat> my calendar with me, I'm lost. I don't know what date it is. I don't know what time it is. I barely know what year it is or what else is going on in my life. I'd, I'd, I'd say if you can find a great digital planner on your phone, utilize that. Um, if you're someone that loves to use paper, grab a nice pen, grab a fantastic diary. Um, I have a beautiful uh, monogrammed one from, um, for, that I use with a fountain pen and it actually gets me excited to use my diary every single day. Don't engage in gossip. It's never a good idea. It's bad karma, guys. <laughs> it's really bad karma. Um, I tend to, I mean, we all love gossip. We all love hearing, you know, all, all the disastrous things. I get my feel from things like Reddit <laughs> and RuPaul's Drag Race and, you know, God, the Kardashians, people who have literally given consent to be gossip, not throughout my, not through my workmates not through my friends, it's none of my business. I, I wanna maintain a really healthy relationship, you know, at work, socially, anywhere, and gossip, gossip just makes a toxic environment. Entering a room, it's a tricky one. You don't wanna come across as uh, Kanye West when he, you know, enters a room and looks like he owns the place, but you certainly wanna walk with confidence. The best thing is to watch your posture, shoulders back, chin up, walk with confidence. And don't cross your arms. That is, um, it, it, I, as much as I know it's a comfortable position to sit in, unfortunately it does give the era of, the, the air, sorry, of being unapproachable and unfriendly. So as much as that is comfortable, you're almost better off popping your hands in your pockets than you are crossing your arms. At least the, the hands in the pockets will give you a casual confidence rather than an, an unapproachability. I, I rely on preparing all of my thoughts ahead of discussion. Um, I, without it, I'm lost. I'll forget things, I miss things and everything like that. Uh, cue cards are great, dot points are great. Sometimes I'll even write out the whole thing as a conversation first and foremost to run over everything I'd like to say so I'm not double like repeating words constantly or to make sure that my sentences aren't too long or too short. Oh, the good old talking in the mirror. <laughs> Jasmine and I were discussing this earlier and you know, for me, sometimes it is really great to go over the flow of anything that's going to be longer than a couple of sentences. Yeah. Uh, just, just to make sure that you're not stumbling over words and things like that. And you know, even if you've practiced, those things will still happen and that's okay. That's part of being human. Goal setting. Goal setting is something that um, I've only recently started doing. And the best thing that I can give is to start small if you've not done it before. Start with one goal for that one week. And whether that be put all of my clothes away every time I get them out or take down the rubbish every single day, whatever that, start small and then slowly build that up to bigger projects and lengthier projects. Trying to dive in in the deep end will just be discouraging. And you'll find that when you flounder, you'll, be, you'll lose your confidence. But when you start small and you build your confidence up, by the time you're looking at 12 months budget projects, it's second nature to you. Mm. But it will take time. Be patient. And the same thing with evaluating your goals, you know, especially when you become long, more, more long term or you're looking at a six month goal, you are going to have things change. You are going to have, you know, things interrupted. So... Going back to your original goals and tweaking those for the next six months is going to keep you on track and it will also help with any hidden surprises or anxieties as well. Ah, good old body language. Body language is another really tricky one. Um, humans have the tendency to 
not really think about how their how their moods are flowing through their body and how their body is actually responding with that. Even something as simple as which foot you are standing on during a conversation can give very, very clear body language. It is hard to become aware of it, but as we've mentioned a couple of times, if you focus on maybe one or two things, such as your posture and not crossing your arms, that should generally give you a really good start. And you will start to notice these things in other people and notice more things. Again, it just takes time. So I have like three email addresses. <laughs> uh, I have one that is absolutely, I, I would never put it on a CV. It's kind of there because I don't really use it anymore, but there's a few things that I haven't changed over yet. Um, I'm pretty sure I've had it for about 15 years. So you can imagine what 15 year old me I would use it as an email. There we go. <laughs> um, and of course I have my personal email, which is just my name at gmail.com. Um, even my partner has a um, two emails that he uses for the band, one for the band and one for his personal, professional kind of things. And that is, again, just his name. I also have a signature and uh, linked to my LinkedIn online as well. So <laughs> it looks like most people are reading an email before they hit send. And that's, you know, that's a given. Another trick is to add in all your... Um, your Grammarly extensions that will check your spelling, check your syntax. So that will also give a really good visual cue, just a little red line underneath the words and things like that, uh, which gives you the opportunity to edit that really, really quickly as well. <sighs> Voicemails are more important than you think. Mm. I didn't have one for years. I didn't need one, I thought. Unfortunately, they are a mark of being an adult. <laughs> And having just a, a clear voicemail of who you are and what their instructions are. So not everybody likes to check their voicemail and some people, you know, it, I understand that it's frustrating, it gets forgotten. That's totally fine. You can pop on your voicemail though. You can actually say, please email me at or text me at instead of leaving a voicemail. But make sure you're giving that clear instructions to the folks that are calling you. So Ben says no, uh, no voicemail on WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> well, Janaka right, right, so yes. What is voicemail? So Mia, you want to let them know, uh, let Janaka know what is voicemail? Uh, voice, does anybody remember the answering machines from the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's that bit like on your phone. <laughs> um, I wasn't aware that WhatsApp doesn't have that. Uh, I don't, uh, we, it's not something that's used overly uh, in Australia, but uh, I wonder, I'll do some research and see if there's a voicemail or a, a, oh, there we go, it costs extra. I wonder if there's a free extension that you can get for it though. <laughs> okay, so how are we with taking notes in meetings? I find it quite difficult to sometimes look like I'm taking notes and listening intently at the same time, or if I'm taking notes, maybe I'll miss something. With the person who's running the meeting, I'll get their permission and I'll actually voice record it if I need to, if it's got really valuable information. So then I can go over that at a later point and make note of the things that I need to make note of and give it my full attention rather than trying to take notes and listen to people and give input into the meeting as well. I think this is something which I see uh, missing in Aleph. Uh, I don't see uh, many people uh, taking notes uh, in, in the meetings. Uh, I, I, I'm, there, are, there is an eight percent people who have given a five to this response, but I think there are other, uh, other 92 percent. Uh, we really need to work on this and start taking notes. It really helps. It absolutely does. Um, did you know that you're seven times more likely to remember something when you write it down? Yeah, uh, and that's like another reason why I keep a calendar and a diary and all of these things. So, a great handshake. How do you know that you've got a great, great handshake? I know it because people tell me, but they mostly tell me that because I'm I'm female presenting, and they'll say, "Wow, you have a great handshake for a girl." Please don't say that either. If someone has a great handshake, fantastic. If they don't, don't make a comment on it. However, <laughs> test it with your friends and family. Yep. Go home and, you know, for the people you can actually shake hands with. <laughs> yep. 
you know, have a, have a go at that. Get their feedback. Too strong? Too weak? What do they think? Yeah. And, you know, to me, like, getting someone else's opinion is always, always the best feedback that you will ever get. So, so Janaka, the, the bone crusher and the dead fish one, uh, I have experienced it myself. You know, there are a lot of people who come for interviews uh, to Aleph, you know, when we were shaking hands and when we were working out for studio. So uh, the first impression which I get of the interviewee, you know, is, uh, is if, if they are shaking hands, I have uh, got dead fish uh, handshake and, you know, I, I completely... Uh, uh, you know, uh, get, uh, I mean, I judge them, you know, I feel that they, they don't, uh, they don't have the strength and, you know, they don't have the passion and, you know, they, their hand is like this. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it is very, very important uh, aspect uh, of your personal brand. Uh, your handshake is, is important. I think, uh, thanks, thanks Mia for, uh, you know, uh, 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 talking about uh, the responses also. And thank you everyone. We know we, we made it a one hour session rather than uh, a bite size uh, 30 minute session and uh, really, really appreciate uh, uh, all of you staying back and uh, listening to us. We hope that uh, uh, this session uh, has given you an insight and uh, you all will start working on the brand you uh, and in some way or the other, uh, you will influence others also around you. Uh, to work on their uh, brand you support people uh, we all need each other uh, uh, let's uh, push each other uh, to become a better version of ourselves uh, thank you guys have a good afternoon thank you Jessie and Mia you. and thank you everyone who's staying on the line till the end of this session so uh, for uh, if everybody uh, if you're on the line and you haven't filled out the form for the virtual event from the HR email please do so we would love to hear for you for Flocket as well as for the academy session another thing that we would like to highlight is the medium article so uh, we actually do have a medium publication so uh, I've actually shared the link in the chat if you want to see so if you have any uh, ideas for articles please reach out to us at academy at lf-labs.com as well and thank you everyone and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Bye. I am not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. I learned to be ashamed of what my scars. Run away, they say, no one will love you as you are, but I won't let them break down the dust, I know that there's a place for us, for we are glorious. When the strongest words want to cut you down. Thanks, Justine, Mia, and Emily. This is Daniel from Rohe, just signing off and uh, appreciating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the session. Very much. Thank you. Thank See you. Bye. Just say, have you finished reading the chat? <laughs> Yeah, I'm still reading. People are still writing. Uh, very sorry, guys, for the initial mess up. Mia, you need to change your laptop. <laughs> but, okay, we picked up very well. And uh, 